ukulele zen and welcome to another live stream on sunday so glad to be with you here please let me know in the chat where you are from i see there are a hand more than a handful of folks here thank you so much for joining me let me know if you can see me and hear me okay this live stream is a a bit of a test you know i'm testing some technical things those of you who showed up last week know that there was a technical problem and it wasn't my hand although that's been known to happen there was something going on with my audio my video my computer my software pretty much everything went wrong so i'm in the process of figuring that all out i have a short um you know workaround so i can come to you live albeit with limited audio uh, fidelity and less graphic capability next week i won't be here with a live stream so let's make the most out of this one next week i'm going to be um, doing a whole lot of technical work i have to buy a whole bunch of gear and just work it out but that's fine i feel very blessed on this sunday to be alive and to be with you and uh, I'm going to work out these technical difficulties. Thank you so much for standing by. Uh, you can hear me, Linda says. Hello, welcome. So today we're going to talk about uh, Chuck Berry's tune, uh, Memphis, Tennessee. We're going to get started in just a moment. This is the song sheet. There's a link to this down below. And you can, um, you can get that as a patron. Big thanks to all the patrons supporting um, this channel. Uh, your support is really allowing me to upgrade my systems and to work out all these technical snafus that are unfortunately plaguing me. There's a second page with a solo and also a riff. We'll get to this as much as we can today. And if we don't get to all of it today, we will get into it next week. So drop me a hello in the chat. Let me know where you're from. Thank you so much for uh, joining me for another Sunday session. If you haven't already, hope you'll subscribe to the channel Ukulele Zen. There are links down below if you want to join as a patron. There are a lot of special perks for patrons and I'm working out a whole bunch of new things that I'm going to be unveiling soon. So thank you so much. Right now, let me jam a little bit. This is a baritone ukulele that's detuned, quite literally detuned. This is A, D, A. This is a nice open tuning to play with. Just enjoy little Barry. Company and I have a detuned A D A D. Um, so I'm gonna get my um, oh my goodness my my standard tu tuned ukulele is all the way on the other side of the room. But I've got another one here. This is a high G, also by the Mainland Company. Um, so my friends, like I said, this is a technical working out the technical difficulties. Uh, please stand by. Um, normally, um, when everything is working, as it has many times in the past, I can show your chat comments, um, I can run my audio through effects and through loops and all kinds of cool stuff. I gotta work out all the details, but for now, let's just, um, let's just go the old school way and, uh, let's just use this whiteboard as my, as my special effects. Um, I got some sweeties in the house. Thank you so much. I wish I could show you on the screen, like I said, but... 
Uh, Andy, thank you for joining us. Hey, Pirate Jenny, glad to have you here. Um, Nan, glad you're here from Salt Lake City. Yes, Charlotte, that is the thing about uh, technology. It's <laughs> an ever-shifting uh, shifting castle of sand that I'm keeping up with. So we got some folks in the Netherlands in the house. Hello. Wonderful. Brazil is in the house. Whidbey Island is in the house. Pacific Northwest. Um, so, oh, we got Michael McKinney in the house from Portola, California. What's up, Randy? Glad you're here. Grant, thank you for joining. I would use my iPhone, Grant. It's just, you know, I, I just want to bring you a higher fidelity. Maybe I'll just use my iPhone. In any case, the sound may be a little crunchy today, but let's get into it. Come on. If you haven't already, download this sheet. And, you know, all these live streams, as you know, you can watch them again and again. There's really just two chords to this song. Let's strum through it, and then we'll go through uh, some of the riffs on the second page. Please just join in as able. We have two chords here, D7 and our G7 chord. And of course, if you look at this song sheet, don't take it too literally. You know, at the very end, the very last chord is a G major, you know. And you can, of course, switch from G7 to G major at that point, or stay on G7. It's really up to what sounds right to you. Before we get jamming, I just want to let you know that um, there is a performance of this with John Lennon and Yoko Ono and Chuck Berry and, this, and the Plastic Ono Band. They performed this on a television show some years back. It was like in the early 70s. You got to YouTube that clip. It's really cool to see them uh, go for it. Uh, Anyway, go watch Memphis, Tennessee, John Lennon and Chuck Berry jamming with Yoko and the band. It's really, really fun. So, that's our melody note. Your second finger on the second fret of the third string. Long distance information. Give me Memphis, Tennessee. Let's strum along and have a good time with this, okay? One, two, one, two, one. Long distance information. Give me Memphis, Tennessee. Help me find the party. Try to get in touch with me. I leave a number, but I know who placed the call. Cause my uncle took the message and he wrote it on the wall. Okay, keep going. Help me information, get in touch with my Marie. She's the only one who'd phone me from Memphis, Tennessee. Her home is on the south side. High up on a ridge, just a half a mile from the Mississippi Bridge. Wa -do -do -bam. Third verse will help me information. More than that, I cannot add. Only that I miss her and all the fun we had. But we were pulled apart because her mom did not agree. And tore apart our happy home in Memphis, Tennessee. Last verse. Let's do it. Well, last time that I saw Marie, she was waving me goodbye. With hurry home drops on her cheeks that trickled from her eyes. Marie is only six years old. Information, please. Try to put me through to her in Memphis, Tennessee. Let's just strum a little bit on G. And then in a moment, I'm going to break down a couple of tricks for you. Let's do one more time the last verse. You ready? Last verse. One, two, go one, two. Well, last time that I saw Marie, she's waving me goodbye. With hurry home drops on her cheeks that trickled from her eyes. 
Jeffrey is only six years old. Information, please. They try to put me through to her in Memphis, Tennessee. Just a first run through. Thank you so much for joining in. Let's, for the rest of this lesson, take a look at what's happening up here so we can see the structure of the song. All right. Every one of these boxes is, there are four beats. So we're bouncing along a one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. For those of you who are not familiar with it, this means to repeat the previous measure. So there are eight bars of D7. The reason why I didn't write and why most musicians, most professional musicians don't write out D7 eight times, it's not to save ink or anything. It's so when the change occurs, when you do change chords, it really pops off the page, you know? So you can see I've helped out by putting some numbers up here, which is also common practice in music. You're counting one, two, three, four, then two, two, three, four, three bars, four, four bars, three, four, five bars, six bars, seven bars, eight bars, and then we go to our G7 chord. Okay, at the very end of the song, four bars of your G major chord. I'm going to show you just a couple of simple but cool chord tricks you can add to your D7 chord. Let's try this. D7. Hello, Anne. Glad you're here. Oh, thank you, Trey. You're very kind. Uh, like, if you're just joining, this is, we're working out the technical issues that have plagued my broadcasts. Please check the links down below if you'd like to get a copy of the song sheet. And if you'd like to join as a patron, many thanks to all the patrons helping this um, channel grow and to improve. So, first of all, when you take your D7 chord, strum it once in the standard position. That's second fret open, second fret open. And just to get the left hand comfortable with this, move it down one fret, and then move it back up. Now move it back down and move it back up. One more time with me, ready? Down to the first fret, up to the second fret. Nice. Watch how I do this. Just watch for one second, then I'm gonna break it down for you. slides are used in a number of different ways. All right, they can be a little tricky at first, but they add a lot of spice to your playing, especially for a tune like this that has a strong backbeat. So the pattern that you can start to work with is down, down, up, up, down, and then the last up, move down, and then come back up. So at the very end of the pattern, let me demo a few times. It'll sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Very good. I hope the audio isn't too crunchy. I've got a, I have to use a Pretty wacky microphone situation held together by bubble gum and duct tape. Check it out. You can do this with your bar chord. And you just gotta lift up the, the, all the pressure, slide it down, squeeze a little bit, and then slide it on up. The way to make chord slides feel light is to train yourself to feel light in your hand. Check in with the thumb, make sure that feels light. Let's do a little bit of this right now, and then we'll get back to the tune. Check it out, I'm gonna go with the bar chord. You can do this with the standard open chord as well. I'll go down, up, down, up, down, relax. There, 
Now take your hand off and just relax. We're going to do it again. Well, we're doing some curls here in the ukulele gym. All right, check it out. One more time. Down and then up, down, up. Ready? Two, three, four. Take your hand off. Yep, thank you, Terry, for that kind comment. You may be doing this. You may be at home right now doing this. And hey, if you can do it again and again, that's cool. I am on purpose, intentionally having you do just a few repeats and then relax so your hand doesn't get tense, all right? It takes a lot of training to bring a soft hand along with you everywhere you go. So check it out. One more time, let's train it two more times. Check it out. One, two, three, four. Take a break. Ah, oh, relax. Your hand's gonna get stronger. It needs to rest. Here we go. Last time. One, two, and three, and four, and... Yeah, so after you do this for a while, you'll be very strong and nimble. It's a really interesting thing to cultivate a hand that's not only strong enough, and but flexible enough to do the things we want it to do. Same thing can happen on the G7 chord. You can move down a fret, you lift up the point, oh, a pointer finger, move down. And just like anything else in life, you know, just gotta repeat it. It's usually best to put some space into our repetitions when we're first doing something because it's very easy to do too much squeezing, right? Have you ever felt some discomfort in your hand? Let me know in the chat if you've ever felt some discomfort in your hand. I once felt tremendous discomfort from my, in my hand when I was a music student, and it kind of forced me into a path of yoga and mindfulness meditation to relax my hand and to relax my playing so I could play with greater ease. All right, it takes time to cultivate that. Now, one last trick. And then we're going to play the tune, and you can drop these tricks in as much as you want. Then we're going to get into the licks on the second page. There's a really cool walk-up you can do on your D7 chord. Now, you can use lots of different fingerings. If you start your D7 like this, you're going to, you're going to add these two melody notes. you got your first melody note, the open A string. Right? The next melody note you're going to drop a finger onto the second fret, you see, right there, and then strum. And then the next note, you're gonna move up to the third fret. You could use a different finger, like the pinky if you want, or just get comfortable smushing that finger up, okay? You may like to do this with this fingering. And in this case, you would drop the pinky right there, and then slide it up. This is one of those classic bluesy sounds, and it is a boogie-woogie piano type of sound. You hear this in a lot of music, including, of course, rock and roll. So let's do this a little bit, just slowly at first. Take you through a little exercise. We'll play four strums of the D7. Ready? Join in with me. One, two, three. Drop that pink uh, finger second fret. Move it up to the third fret, back down, and then open. Nice. Can we just relax? We're going to do that again, four strums each, then we're going to do three strums each, then two, and then one. And you can tell already where it's going. We're going to get faster and faster. Thank you, Aries. Oh, I so appreciate your, your being here and your generosity, and thank you, Mary. Let me get to your question in just one sec. Let's do this again, four strums each chord. Join in with me, D7. One, two, three, take it easy. Here we go, drop it on the second fret. Listen to your beautiful sound. Let's go around again, four strums each. Don't try too hard, keep it light. Nice, come on. All right. 
Let's do three strums each. You ready? One, two, three. One, two, here we go. Put it down, two, three. We're just exercising one motion, one bit of vocabulary. And by learning something new thoroughly and carefully like this, you're going to remember it for longer. Get ready to move up, third fret. And relax, good. Feel free to take your hand off, soften up that thumb. It's always nice if you have a strap on your ukulele, then you're not using your left hand to hold, or your fretting hand to hold it up. Let's do two strums each, and then one strum each. Come on, here we go. One, two, three, four, one, two, two strums each. One, two, one, two, one. You can start to bring that up strum in it. Two beats each. One, two, three, four. Keep going. See, if I had my loop pedal working, I could play on top of you. Nice, everybody. Now, last thing, one strum each. It's really one beat each. You could strum it more than once, but one beat each. One, two, three, four, one. So we're just exercising it, you know? We're just training. Um, when we're training, it can be really helpful to be willing to be very simple when you're practicing, you know? It doesn't have to um, be virtuosic at first. In fact, in my experience, it's better to learn things in a very simple way, get the body comfortable with what it needs to do, get the mind comfortable around what it needs to understand, and then the speed and the nuances and the variations come almost, well, not automatically, but they come a lot easier because you've put that foundation in. Hit me up in the chat if you, if you understand what I'm talking about. Learn something slowly and thoroughly. You own it, you know, for a long time. Um, I had a great question earlier. I just want to make sure Mary asked, barred B-flat chord used to make my finger numb until I learned practicing bar chord scales. I was practicing wrong. Okay. Yeah, the f learning to play bar chords, especially, you know, an entire scale. And all the way up. Um, not sure what key you were playing in, but that can really test the finger's ability to stay relaxed and comfortable. So my friends, um, I want to move on now uh, to the licks but I'd like to play the tune one more time, all right? Let's, let's put all of these nuances. If you wanna add the chord slides in occasionally, you can add this to your D7 chord. And what we're, that's optional though. You don't have to do that to make good music. What we do wanna do though is to keep the form. Let's feel that bouncing ball going across the page. And in your mind, you want to imagine a backbeat drummer, some blues drumming cat who's just holding it down for you, you know? Okay, so let's keep our, uh, keep our focus on the chart as we go through the song. And I'll sing some words, you can sing some words too, or just do, 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 you know, scat. Use your voice creatively. Are you ready? One. Two, one, two, one, two, three. Long distance information. Give me Memphis, Tennessee. Help me find the party. Try to get in touch with me. She could not leave her number, but I know who placed the call. Cause my uncle took the message and he wrote it on the wall. Two, three.
three, four back to the top, D7, two, do, do, three, do, 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 four, five, six, seven, eight, move on. at the top. Wonderful everybody, give yourself a hand, come on now. That's not easy to do. That's not easy to do. You played through the form twice. Normally, especially in ukulele jam sessions, you know, we're following along with chord charts, you know, lyrics with chords on top. This is a, uh, a, deeper, a deeper level of understanding the song form. All right. Another great thing to do, of course, is to listen to the tune. So go listen to Chuck Berry. His original version is, I think, from 1957. It's an old recording. Uh, and, of course, check out many other recordings. Many artists have, have recorded this. And there's, like I mentioned earlier, an awesome YouTube clip of John Lennon, Yoko Ono, the Plastic Ono Band, and Chuck Berry on live. I think it was must have been live TV or recorded live anyway. It's so fun. You got to go check that out. I love that recording. Um... So, I am spontaneously putting some variations in here. Rhythmic and harmonic. Harmonic would be actually changing the chords. Rhythmic would be dropping in things like a triplet. Let's say I'm playing four bars of, D, of the G7 chord. I might play two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now just hold the phone. I know I've been sharing a lot of different things with you, but this is a really good one to have. Write this down. Accent beat two. Okay. This is a very, very cool thing to do, especially in bluesy, jazzy, swinging tunes. Notice I come in, beat one, kind of soft. One, and then two. All right, it has the effect of... Right? It's the kind of thing that you hear drummers do all the time, hitting on beat two, sometimes with a cymbal and a rim shot. And you can you do that this way. You go one, wind up, and then whip the strings hard, and then back off. Let's try this together, okay? We'll do it every other measure. So we do it on this one, then we don't do it here, and then we'll do it again here, and then we won't do it here. Check it out. One, do it nice and slow. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, do it again with me. Thank you, Don. Nice to hear from you. Charlotte, thank you for that super chat support. I truly appreciate that. Keep it going here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now keep, you know, keep doing that if you want, or you may like to stop and just watch what I'm writing out. This is the rhythm. All right, four quarter notes, and we're accenting the second one. Now, of course, I am also adding upstrums in, eighth notes. This is meant to be something that you, eventually, when you strum, you're improvising your rhythm. Yes, we want to lock in with tempo, and some songs have a very specific strumming pattern. But many songs, and you probably have already experienced this, you just do what you feel. So this is the template, right? This is the big template. And then on top of this, you can put so many things in. Other rhythmic things and harmonic things. So check it out. Here it is. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. You can put some dynamic buildup. So right here, it's loud, 
let it ring out, and then build it back up. Boom, cha. Boom, cha. So this is using another powerful technique, dynamics. Have you ever noticed that when when somebody's like speaking quietly, you lean in, right, to hear what they're saying? Or in a powerful speech, they're making a big point and then suddenly, it's important that you understand that the, right, dynamics, it's so key to expression. So dynamics, it's not only the addition of an accent or something loud, but also the subtraction, making it quiet. Just check this out and have a blast with it. This can be really fun to explore. Breaking down one moment and showing you that you can zoom into one moment and just practice one little trick. Then you go back to play the song and let's drop it in, okay? From the top, ladies and gentlemen, and then we're gonna learn a cool riff. Are you ready? One, two, top. One, two, one, two, three, long distance information. Give me Memphis, Tennessee. Top me on the party, trying to get in touch with me. Name, name the number, but I know who place to call. Cause the uncle took the message and he wrote it on. You don't want to do too much of this because it could maybe distract from the vocal. But a little bit of this can go a long way to spice up your playing. Let me know what you think. If you got any questions about anything in the chat down below. And can I just say really quickly, thank you for joining me for this live stream. Next week, there won't be a live stream. I've got to work out all these technical issues. I'm restructuring a lot of things in my studio. So uh, we won't be here next week. Thank you for being here this week. There are links down below to this song sheet right here. And also, if you'd like to support with a donation, there's an ability to offer a donation in the link down below. Thank you so much. For those of you who are patrons, merci beaucoup, spasibo, muchísimas gracias, merci beaucoup, danke vel, danke schön, cheers. <laughs> Thank you so much, arigato. And, um, Let's keep on going, all right? Thanks for hanging and for learning. Um, Andre, use Rascheado, yeah. Yeah, I have a little guitar over here. Let's see about this. This is a, uh, a mini guitar. Rascheado would be a...
this mini guitar. A little bit of unrehearsed uh, Brazilian music. This is a fun way of getting into guitar. This is made by Flight. I think there's a link down below. It's a six string mini guitar. It's a ukulele with the two strings. So it's essentially like a guitar if the guitar started at the fifth fret. I'm gonna get back into the Chuck Berry lesson in a moment, but speaking of Chuck Berry... Nadja, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, four strings are enough. Believe it or not, six can be easier. I know that sounds crazy, but six strings can be easier because you have a more full um, expression of the chord. Hey, thanks so much for joining me, and thank you very much for those uh, super chats. I do intend to just play a live concert. I'm totally just ad hocking it here, playing you little snippets, but I'll, uh, I'll play a full concert for you someday soon. And... Um, Let's, um, let's get into this stuff right here. What is this stuff right here? This stuff right here, this is the, this is the solo. And um, what it is, it's actually not so hard to play. It's over the D7 chord, and you hear this in the recording. I wish I had my loop pedal set up. Ah, uh, technical difficulties, right? All right, that's the first riff over a D7 chord. Then, over the G chord, or G7 chord, it moves up to here. I'm gonna take you through every, every note, so just watch for now. All right, then it moves back to... Now, if that makes you go, no worries. Let me take you through this nice and easy in a uh, relaxing, <laughs> humorous Zen manner. The first, okay, the first thing to do is to start to see these as pairs of notes. For the D7, I'm going to use blue ink. All right, so you've got your middle finger right here at the sixth fret your first finger is right here at the fifth fret. Pinch those two notes, just pluck them together, you see? And right up there, it's notated in tablature. And guess what? This same thing, same shape moves down to frets four and three, same fingers. So they move down right here. Now, this time for the next pair, move the middle finger and then place the ring finger. Kind of like if you were playing a G7 chord, but you're only playing those two strings. All right. And then the next two are just the open strings. I know at the end of this measure, there's a little notation to slide. It's optional. That's just if you want to add some extra expression to it. So check it out. These are for the D7 chord, these four shapes. You're going to watch this again, I hope, you know, and maybe share it with your friends if you want to learn this together. Um, somebody strums a D7 chord, and then on top of it, you're going to play these notes. One, two, three, four. So let's try this together, nice and slow. First finger, fifth fret. Second finger, sixth fret. You are the loop, Andre. Nice, I like that. <laughs> One, two, nice and slow. Move it down. Move it down. 
it again, middle finger, 6th fret. Okay, congratulations, you just played these two, and if it sounded stumbly, no sweat. Here's what you do. Start with just pinching the notes. Treat every note you play like it's a singing bell. You know, in about uh, five minutes, we're going to start a meditation and we'll use the singing bell. Listen to your notes carefully. Let them ring out just like church bells, just like singing bowls. And just take a moment to listen to that. In this high-paced world, you know, where we're just being, we're rushing all over the place, take a moment to be with one sound and watch the reward you get. Your body starts to soften. Your mind's curiosity about where to put your fingers is satisfied. And now you can go deeper, deeper. Really listen to it. Can you hear both notes? When you pluck them both at the same time, can you hear the low note and the high note at the same time? Power tip for you from an from a old man, <laughs> seasoned pro. Listen for the low note the inner strings because you'll always hear the ones on top but if you can bring out the the ones in the middle there you hear the harmony sometimes when you hear double stops two notes being played you only hear the, the high note and just a little bit of that one try to bring out the low note okay so hang out with this and then we do it with rhythm. Let's do it with rhythm and then I'm going to show you the G7 lick. Come on, cats, let's do this. One, two, one, two, three, four. Move down. Move down. And open. Sixth fret. Move down. Move down. Very nice. You might like to repeat this several times, just like we were practicing before. It's a great idea to put a lot of space and relaxation into it and to go deeper. Listen to the present moment. That's where the music is happening. Next, um, I'd like you to now take that shape and we're going to move it up two frets to, excuse me, three frets to nine and eight. And for these ones, we're going to mark it with the red. Okay. So for the G7 chord, we're playing this with the red. Okay. And then it moves to seven and seven. Then it's going to move to five and five. And then seven and seven and five and five. All right. So for the D7 chord, you're playing these blue pairs of notes. For the G7, I know it says G, but G, G7, tomato, tomato, it's the same chord in this context. We're going to do that again, and for those of you who are already comfortable, you can start to add some nuance by sliding some expressive nuance. Watch. See how I slid into that first note, maybe from one fret below even? All right, so my middle finger is starting at the eighth fret, sliding into the ninth fret where it begins the new pattern. Hang out with just that. Right, and then you can do the same thing down here down here and then you'll see those slides all the way over there at the end of this line you, that's another tasty thing to do not required you could still make great music just picking totally cool if you want to make it extra saucy all right put some of the hollandaise on there some of the mole a little bit of sauce. All right.
you already have everything you need in this page and in what I've showed you to play the solo all the way through. Right now, before we wrap up the lesson and get into the meditation, let's play this together, okay? We're gonna do it two times. First time, nice and easy, nice and slow. Please feel free to just strum the chords too. And then we'll do it a little bit faster. Okay, thank you for joining me. Hit me up in the chat, let me know what you think. And I appreciate you being here with me, supporting my channel. One, two, a one, two, three, four. Move down. solo Chuck plays. Here it's a little different. Nice. So you see that very second to last bar on this line, it breaks up the pattern, uh, breaks up the pairs. Two, two, open, open, and then a little strum of the G chord, but stopping on that second string so you get that G string as your high note. Jenny is asking, but can I have Mornay sauce? More, yeah, go for it. I've never heard of Mornay sauce. Is that like a reduction of garlic and wine? Mornay. Please play solo in context of the song. Yeah, totally, Grant. We'll do it. So where you put this, First of all, listen to many recordings and know that you have freedom to do it any way you want, you know. Um, you could place the solo in between these two verses right here. You could place the solo here. You could place the solo maybe here and here. Um, this song, uh, you know, it's a very open structure so you can change it around. And by the way, Chuck Berry wrote a part two to this song where he is reunited with Marie. It's like the happy ending for this song. He's reunited with his daughter, the character Marie in the song. So you might want to check that out. That's on the Th Chess Records Bach set. You can check that out. Memphis, Tennessee, part two or something like that. Oh, it's a cheese sauce, all right. It is a sweet song, Divine Mother Wisdom, right. Chuck was a real poet. He was, really was a rock and roll poet. If you haven't checked out a lot of his tunes, I know many of his famous ones are in our head, but I encourage folks to listen to some of his lesser known tunes. He really was a rhythmic poet. A lot of folks say hip hop came from Chuck Berry. Uh, you know, the, here come all flat top, he come moving up slowly. You know, a lot of that rhythmic delivery I know, the grandfather of hip hop in some ways. All right, let's play this again. I hope that answers your question, Grant. You would play a, a verse. Torpar, our happy home in Memphis, Tennessee. And then when you go back to the D7 chord, you would start to solo. Go listen to the recordings. You'll hear what I'm saying. All right, let's do this one more time, friends. Thank you so much. Remember, you can slide into every note on the third string or every once in a while. Feel free to fill in that space. All right, let's do this together. One, two, a little faster. One, two, three, four. Here we go again. Here we go now. Yeah, nice. This 
stuff takes time. When you play some single note melodies, all your chording will become stronger. You'll begin to slowly but surely unlock the neck and gain the technical facility. Technical facility means your hands can do what you want them to do. If I take the ukulele away, this is what the hand looks like, okay? It's like I'm walking down the street smelling something delicious. That is literally what my teacher, my Italian classical guitar teacher taught me to do. Because this puts you in touch with the thumb being behind the fingers in a relaxed way and a wrist being relaxed. And is this not the gesture of we're very happy? You know, this is delicious. So when you play, of course, we're not going to wiggle our hand like that, but you can feel that it's soft. So take the hand away every once in a while and just check in your position. You don't have to do this for years. It won't take years. It will take moments of just being willing to correct things in a friendly way. Those experiences will stack on top of one another and pretty soon you're making clear melodic phrases. This works all over a D7 chord. You could also play it the other way around. you can take this one nugget of information for the D7 chord, the one nugget of info for the G7 chord, and just use them, okay? So thanks for joining me. You know, we're not going to meet next week. I need to work out all these technical difficulties with my system. Many thanks for your patience. Thank you for being a... For those of you who are patrons, thank you so much for your support. I am going to be um, keeping in touch with all of you through my posts, offering some special lessons in the coming months. And of course, I'll let you know when my live streams are up and running again. So my friends, hope you have fun with Memphis, Tennessee. Watch this again. And um, you have two very cool country licks right now for two chords. How are you feeling? Let me know in the chat. How are you doing? This is a fun little instrument I wanted to share with you. Part banjo, part hammer dulcimer. Stick and the song I was singing, written by my wife for our little boy Rowan, Rowan Bear. We see a cutie right there. <sighs> this is one of Rowan's favorite toys. 
he strums, I change the notes. Alright, I'm going to play some more of this for you in the future. Right now, right now, thank you so much for your kind comments, for your patience. I'd like to share a short meditation, a little, a simple practice that you can use throughout your day and customize it to your own heart's calling. The practice is very simple. It is stopping. Step one is stopping, calming, and looking deeply. So we stop, we use our breath and our attention on our breath to calm down, to watch the fluctuations of the mind, just like weather, it comes, it goes. And then we look deeply into the present moment. And often a whole lot of gratitude starts to rain down. This is a wonderful practice of just stopping, calming, and looking deeply. So I'm going to begin. I just want to read a few comments here. Cheryl. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate you joining my Patreon page very much. Yeah, Helen, there's so much great Chuck Berry uh, poetry, you know. Of course, a lot of his tunes are, you know, uh, definitely rock and roll, um, jukeboxes, teenage things, but he, the way he tells a story is so cool. And uh, yeah, check out Chuck, Chuck's Deeper Cuts. Patricia, thank you so much. I appreciate that very much, everyone. I won't be here next week. When I ring the bell, I want to in invite you to listen to, just like we were listening to those harmony notes, the low one and the high one, listen to all the different tones of this bell. There are many of them. And the microphone right here is probably not going to pick them all up. But you'll hear a low, a mid, and a high. So just listen. Bring your attention to your breath. The magic of meditation comes, the miracle comes when we keep our attention on the present moment. And before we begin, let me share one thing. We're not saying concentrate like somebody yelling at you. Concentrate. It's kind of like when you see a beautiful sunset or you see a, a puppy in somebody's yard or your neighbor's child having fun. You don't have to stop. You don't have to try to stop and, and, and be in wonder of those things, right? It's pretty effortless. So that's the quality of concentration we're bringing. We really are interested in this beautiful, wonderful moment. And we're just using this as a tool to bring our attention into the present moment. So let's listen. We'll breathe. I won't, I won't say much. Let's just breathe and enjoy the space. Thank you for joining me. Simply follow your breathing where it is in this moment without trying to control it, manipulate it at all. Just be with your breathing, your body's wisdom, knowing exactly how much to breathe in, how much to breathe out. Follow your breathing all the way in, all the way out. Notice if there is a pause between your breath and just calmly wait for the next inhalation, softening, listening.
Your in-breath and your out-breath are like the bow of a violin drawing across a string. Listen to the music of your breathing. Just for these few moments, nowhere to go, nothing to do, just calmly abiding in the presence of your breath, in your spirit. and the great spirits that animate our life. So friends, if you've listened this far, thank you. Throughout your day, you may be, who knows, sweeping the floor, washing dishes, working on a project, playing your instrument. At some point, you may hear the bell of mindfulness within inviting you to return and take three or five breaths and then continue on. It can be very pleasing to do things like wash dishes while paying attention to our breath. Something tells me you already know that. <laughs> but it's very easy to forget. So may your journey be fruitful and peaceful. Wishing you and your families all the best. Many blessings. Happy music making. I won't be here next week. I'll be in touch. And we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Please subscribe to the channel so you keep in the loop. Go forth. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Thank you for joining me for this time. I'll catch you sometime soon. All blessings. Much love. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Thank you.